professional wrestling truly is the best thing ever. Sometime. I will never forget that Monday night, March 26, 2001, turning on Nitro and there was Vent telling us there was no more WCW. He had monopolized the US wrestling industry. He was now the only show in town. Until a year later. On June 19, 2002, the world would bear witness to the launch of NWA TNA. It would later drop, NWA becoming TNA. Then there was GFW for a couple of months. Later it would change names again to Impact, which is the best one in my opinion. But as of a few weeks ago, they're bringing TNA back again. And I'm sure it makes sense to someone, somewhere. I was one of many who used to jump on the Hate Dixie and TNA bandwagon, but now Impact truly has come into its own. You don't get the pageantry and production of WWE, but you do get good TV wrestling and interesting storylines. But way more important than all of that, you may get to witness true pro wrestling history. There's a few time in Impact's history where they were part of, if not the reason for, things we can't imagine not happening. I'm Walt the Most Gangster Nerd on YouTube, and this is the impact of TNA Wrestling. For one example, they made wrestling crossovers cool. The invasion angle in WWE was, well, it was what it was. It could have been better, but it could have been way worse. WWE tried to give us what we wanted. However, not long after this, if you watch TNA, you may get to see ROH guys, or guys from AAA, and even guys from New Japan. All you seen from WWE was WWE guys. Even when Vince had deals with All Japan Women's Wrestling and deals with Mexican promotion, he would expose us for the first time to legends like Bull Nakano and Mil Mascaras, but WWE never really wanted to acknowledge the entire wrestling universe. TNA on the other hand, they seemed to march right into this, not only providing wrestlers with a chance to show themselves and what they can do, but also giving the fans and us fantasy bookers what we always wanted, the acknowledgement of an entire wrestling universe. They may not have executed it perfectly every time, ah, poor Okada, but they didn't insult the fans intelligence by pretending they existed in a bubble. Along with that, something I have always wanted to talk about in kayfabe, without TNA, we don't get Los Ingobernobles de Japón. Yes, yes, I'm well aware Los Ingobernobles started in CMLL, Tetsu Unido was sent there from New Japan, blah blah, but in the story, when we go back in time to 2011, Chaos in New Japan were still bad guys. They were vicious, and if you made the crew look bad, that might mean you're not safe. Naito would fail to defeat Jeff Hardy for the TNA World Championship, and later fell in a challenge to win IWGP Tag Team Gold, leading his partner Yujiro Takahashi to walk out on him and join Bullet Club. And for all these reasons, Naito was out of chaos. But this is when he came in to his own and we seen just how good a performer he was. He would go on to win the G1 Climax that year, and in time, he returned to CMLL, where he fell in with Los Ingobernobles. That's where we get this taunt from, and that's something you know now. You're welcome. After returning to New Japan, he kept representing Los Ingobernobles, and in time, built his own brand, the Los Ingobernobles de Japón. If you like DX in the 90s, you'll like LIJ. But I seriously don't think we get to that stable or the modern character of Tetsuya Nato without that loss to Jeff Hardy for the TNA World Championship. To add to that, us wrestling fans love a championship lineage. The more historic, the more prestigious, the better. And what title is packing more of that prestigious historical punch than any other? the NWA World's Heavyweight Championship. We are back in love with this title after so many years in the wilderness. No disrespect to former champs like Colt Cabana, Adam Pearce, Tim Storm, and other indie guys who held the title during those dark years. But now everyone, except me, loves to hate Tyra. We were all so happy for Trevor Murdoch. We will always wonder what could have been with Matt Cardona. And I know I can't wait to see how it goes for EC3. And why? Because Nick Aldis made the NWA belt relevant once again. 
The funny thing is, is it didn't have to happen. Who signed Nick Aldis first? TNA, during the Dixie years. And don't get me wrong, when he was Magnus, he was good. TNA world champ, tag champ, the main event mafia storyline, but he knew he was capable of so much more. TNA would fail to utilize him in a way befitting a wrestler of his talent, and he would slip right through the fingers of Dixie Carter out into the waiting arms of Billy Corgan in the NWA. Nick Aldis would then go on a multi-year critically acclaimed run as NWA champion. He would contribute to the magic that was that first all in. This man literally did the NWA 10 pounds of gold documentary all by himself, not paid. Which you need to go out of your way to see. Imagine if these things had been different. If he put all that energy and ability into TNA, where both him and the company could be right now, but instead history went the way it did. And once again, it was impactful. And I bet this name seems way more appropriate. There are other examples of impact impacting the wrestling world, but that's for another time. If you're not watching, you definitely should be. You still get a little taste of everything. The world title picture stays pretty interesting. The X Division has some awesome matches. They actually have a tag team division, which I wish WWE and AEW could say that. And if those reasons ain't good enough, remember, you just might see TNA impact the entire wrestling landscape. I'm Walt, the most gangster nerd on YouTube, and I'll be seeing you soon enough.